Welcome to DigiTalk. I'm uh, up until four months ago, I was with Oracle. I was part of Oracle's global leadership around industries for emerging solutions. That's AI, blockchain, IoT, chatbot, machine learning, that sort of stuff. Uh, and we've been doing a lot of um, uh, blockchain uh, solutions for the industries for a long while. And it's good, a bit clunky, a bit slow, a bit insecure, but it was good. It's some good stuff going on. And then I met Mance and I met Lehman. And uh, I think the Microsoft speaker spoke about you know, having a desire to work with things that change the world. I met Mance and Lehman, and sometimes you just meet people and you go, that's right. That's the problem. That's amazing. That's inspiring. So if nothing else, go and look for Mance and Lehman. Don't listen to me. Go and look for Mance and Lehman, and, and you'll be inspired about actually, not blockchain, not Bitcoin. Forget about the technology. You'll be inspired about actually how distributed ledger itself can actually change the way in which we do stuff, can actually change the world. It's not just about Bitcoin, by the way. So I just want to talk to you for just a few minutes about actually, with Hedera, what we're doing, what our vision is, and why that vision to build the next trust layer of the internet is so compelling, why that vision can be realized. And actually, with uh, Mance and Lehman, the thing that really drew, to me that drew me to them was, yes, the technology was fantastic, but actually, the vision was amazing, the execution is incredible, and actually the line of sight to deliver the world's first public distributed ledger that is fast, fair, and secure, and available to all in the next few months is amazing. Available to all at a very, very, very low price, a fraction of the cost of a cent. That's amazing. Everybody be able to use a distributed ledger to connect an untrusted world together to transact is is really, really inspiring. And that's what we're building here with Hedera. How does this move on? Do you know why this doesn't move, please? Thank you very much. So first of all, something about Hedera. Hedera is a member-based organization. It's very, very different to any, any of the other distributed ledgers you see around. It consists of a cross-section of the world's leading organizations. Ultimately, we will have 39 great organizations leading Hedera around the world. That is governing the way in which this network's run. And governing is really, really key to building trust, especially to building trust in a public distributed ledger for the enterprise. And that is key for the enterprise, a public distributed ledger. So right now, we announced our first five members. Ultimately, there'll be 39 over the next year, 18 months or so. The first five, Deutsche Telekom, you know, one of the world's greatest telcos, DLA Piper, Great big law firm, uh, Magazine Luisa, they're like Amazon for Latin America, Nomura, huge uh, international bank, Swisscom blockchain, and further. Over the next couple of weeks, you'll see announcements uh, with uh, some of the world's leading companies across the airlines industry, payments industries, uh, uh, systems integrators, all sorts. Uh, and that's going to be a fantastic announcement. You start to see the global um, governing council for Hedera build and build and build. And that's fantastic. Again, our goal is to build a network available to all at a very, very low cost. So the four things that got, I got really excited about Hedera, about how we can really make a difference, are number one, amazing technology. Very, very, this is not blockchain, I'll tell you why. This is not blockchain. Secondly, the fact that we're building a unique model here, we're building governance. I happen to work for Hedera, but actually Hedera is run, is governed by these companies. So when these companies say to us, Nomura and uh, DLA Piper, Magazine Louisa, and the future ones that are about to be announced, tell us, actually, the network needs to go this way. When you're going to build tokenization of assets, uh, the policies need to look like this. When you're doing micropayments across multiple parties in seconds, it needs to look like this. That's exactly how the network will run. And these organizations are not going to be sitting here becoming centralized organizations. They have a term, a short term, that they're allowed to serve on, on, the, on the council, and then, they will, then somebody else will replace them, so we don't end up with centralized but we do end up with governance, and governance for distributed ledger, governance in an untrusted world, is actually vital for enterprise adoption. That's very, very different. And security was the other thing I got very excited about. Security is really interesting, because security with Hedera, we achieve something called ABFT, which is actually, not only is the network astonishingly fast, 
but this network is as secure as you can get. Asynchronous, Byzantine, fault tolerant. I won't go into too much about that. There's a white paper if you want to leave it on Hedera.com. And then stability. The council governs the network. The code is patented, but it is open review. Anybody can look at the code, look at every single line of the code, and compile the code. That's very, very different to everybody else. And that's why we keep stability. Stability, governance, security, and technology are the four things that this world needs for a public enterprise distributed ledger. Then that is exactly what Tadera is building to make a difference in this world. So we talk about the trust layer of the internet. Speed is something that is uh, really, really vital. At the moment, with, with a distributed ledger, blockchain, uh, and others, they're pretty slow. And they're, they're deliberately slow, and, and for, good, for good reason. But Hedera, at the, uh, the algorithm level, we're achieving uh, 100,000 transactions per second, which is, which is fantastic. Actually, I've seen it at 250,000, but I don't think that's realistic going out. But 100,000 transactions per second. And importantly, with finality, that means the transaction is complete. It cannot be reversed. You can be blockchain. It cannot be reversed between three and seven seconds, with transaction costs at a fraction of a cent. Now, if you think about what you can do if you've got a network that is global, that you get finality, that you, get re you have really, really low transaction costs, you can create whole new revenue streams. Think about this across the music industry, when you can start to then, with fraction of a cost, apparently when, the Bach, when Bach is played, uh, there are about seven people in line that have to be play paid. Well, if you've got a transaction, when you play that music, you can say, actually, you can instantly settle to those seven people in line. That makes a difference. So that changes music streaming. That changes the way in which you can pay people across all sorts of business models with micropayments. And that's really disruptive. That allows organizations to come onto the, to anybody to come on the Hedera network. And many, many hundreds of organizations are doing this at the moment on our test net and start to build new ways in which you can run micropayments, new ways in which you can build business models. It makes things really, really efficient in this untrusted world. Fair and secure is really important. If it's fair, if it's fair, people will trust it. For us, fairness is really, really vital. We achieve fairness and security in a way that nobody else does. Fairness, because as you cross the network across the world, within a few seconds, the nodes, no, the nodes that receive the transactions are judged on the median time they receive those transactions. Not the fastest node, not the slowest node. We take all the time that the nodes receive the transaction across the world and, and state that that transaction transaction happened in the median time. That means you can't have somebody loading up the network with, with more and more, um, more and more HBARs, more and more currency, and achieving uh, a, 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 and influencing the network. We take the median time of the network. So if we've got the median time of the network for the, for the transaction, we can then achieve fair ordering across the network. And that is vital. Think about fairness, fair ordering, the median time. That's vital to many, 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 many things going forward. So you can start to run, um, you can start to run enterprise mission-critical applications, execute smart contracts based upon a true timestamp across the entire network of the world, a median common timestamp across the network of the world. And that is extremely important when you think about regulatory compliance and things in the financial industry. And then again, uh, enterprise-grade governments by these uh, FTSE 500, these, these world's largest, largest organizations, not just FTSE, but all the, all the stock exchanges, it's going to be run by the enterprise, it's going to be an enterprise platform for use by, by the world going forwards. I've only got a couple more minutes left, I think. Um, so what we're actually doing, so we're taking this network, we're now extending this with use cases. So think about payments use cases. Payments, we, because we've got very, very low transaction fees across the network, you can start to completely change the payment settlements process. Verification of credentials. Think about the gig economy and people start to verify who's got, who's got what skills with, uh, and where those people sit and be able to find new work using credentialing across the network, again at low, low transaction costs. Doing micropayments, as I said, across the music industry becomes extremely interesting. Being able to do telco roaming, telco roaming and fraud detection with you managing a white list and the telco running, managing a white list, so you can very, very quickly determine whether something has been, uh, been, been stolen or not. And then start to build decentralized marketplaces for data. Start to really monetize data and really start to be able to use that data across multiple channels. Think about cars driving around and starting to get all the data those cars are collecting, not about themselves, but about the environment around them, how you can start to monetize that data. There's all sorts of things coming around there. So we started to build really interesting use cases working with our enterprise council and our customers. I spend all my time talking to customer, 
customers about how they will be able to use the, uh, this distribu distributed ledger to start to build some really interesting use cases so across all of these, all these spaces. So use cases around payments, track and trace in the marketplace, all of these become very, very interesting. But enabled because Hedera is so fast and the transaction costs are so low and we achieve finality in seconds across the entire network. We don't have to wait for a block to be put on the blockchain or, or anything like that. And again, Hedera is not a blockchain. Hedera is a distributed ledger. Blockchains are designed to be slow deliberately. Blockchains, uh, the way in which they work is they have a proof of work puzzle. I was on a, on a panel recently, people defending proof of work, saying proof of work is beautiful, this is a beautiful distributed ledger. You know, the, the, the most powerful computer, uh, and energy is cheap, the most powerful computer is going to put the next block on the blockchain. Surely not, that can't be right. You can't have to dam the Tigris in order to be able to build the next uh, huge energy pool in order to be able to put a block on a blockchain. Ultimately, one of these should be able to participate. One of these should be able to be a run, run consensus. Why not? You can do that on Hedera, by the way. You can do that on the smallest computer. You don't have to have a great big proof of work uh, uh, computer in order to be able to mine the network. You just don't need it. Um, and and uh, Hedera, as we say, is astonishingly fast. Actually, it's the speed of the internet. It's, uh, it, we use uh, some incredible technology called a gossip by gossip and, uh, and uh, virtual voting in order to do that. But again, there's some papers. Uh, papers around that. I think I'm being told. I've got to hurry up. So, yes, again, there's, there's the Governing Council. The Governing Council is going to grow and grow and grow by main, known organisations, and there's all the controls in place to ensure stability of the network, that the network does not fork, that it is secure, and it's uh, all managed by the Governing Council. We've got that. So there are three crypto services, uh, three services that the platform is being launched on. There's probably another service coming up very, very soon. Crypto smart contract and file storage. And I'll finish very quickly, just come through here to the last thing. And that is where we actually are is over the next... Hopefully by midsummer, we will actually, we've just finished the test net, we've just opened up to 100,000 users around the world, um, just for the final testing of the network, and then we will actually launch this uh, to, to the world, open access, uh, later this summer, um, in which case anybody in the world can sign on, start to build applications, and actually use this network, and we've got, as I say, already hundreds and hundreds of distributed applications that are building it and testing it right now at the moment. So it's an exciting time for Hedera. When I met the, the founders a, f a, um, a few months ago, I was inspired by their passion, their line of sight to execution, and we are delivering on that execution, and everybody will be able to use Hedera in the coming months.